All right, so we're going to go ahead and talk the Charlet Influence Steers today. Uh, we liked them 1, 4, 2, 3, with cuts of 4, 2, and 5. This was a class that we felt easily sorted itself into a top trio of stout-boned, big-hit, soggy-centered steers with a simple bottom. We felt that the Chrome Steer 1 was a simple and easy place to start. He's one who's big-topped, clean-fronted, and you have to appreciate him out of his hip and hind leg when you set him into motion. And when you read him on the profile, you have to find him to be bold through his center rib. He's the most cracked open out of his chest floor, and he by far handles himself the smoothest and the most comfortable when on the move. Still, he's one that we'd like to make maybe a nickel better out of his head and neck, but that's being pretty harsh on a good one, so we found him still to start. Next, we found the four steer to sort up. He's one who brings to the table the same added bone and muscle shape that our class winner has. He's stout boned, square hipped, and he carries himself with some added body and lower rib. Unfortunately, where he likes to give up is the fact that he's shorter necked and wants to get jammed up in terms of his pattern, so we like to sort him into that second hole. Still to round out that top trio, the two steer falls into our third spot. He's one we really have to like on the profile in terms of his balance and added look, and you have to find him to combine some power and stoutness from start to finish, while still staying cool out of his chest floor. Now there's no doubt or question that we did find him to be the answer to a product-driven decision within the class, but where he likes to give up is when you set him into motion as he gets coarse and likes to tuck in his pins, and we'd like to reorganize him in terms of his hip and hind leg. But to keep it simple, he's just not built good enough to sort up any higher in the class, so he goes third. Now, like I said, the red steer is in here to go fourth, so that's not to assume that there's not some pieces that we do like about him. He's one that you have to find to be more athletic in terms of his pattern, and you have to appreciate him for how level he stays out of his top, but he's still the tightest and the flattest in his rib shape. He's the plainest at his side of the class, but more importantly, we have to remember that this is a market class, and he lacks the added muscle and stoutness that the ones before him had. Now sure, he does have the advantage in cutability, like many of you mentioned, but he's still a tick uncomfortable inside of his skeleton for us, so we still like to quickly sort him to the bottom. Again, we like the Char Influence Steers 1, 4, 2, 3, with cuts of 4, 2, and 5. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Trenton Broughton, and I'll be talking to Market Bearers for today. Uh, before I start, I want to say thank you to everybody for coming out and participating in this contest. There's a lot more people that participated than I thought and from a lot different areas. So thank you guys for coming out. And secondly, I want to thank everybody for who put this on, uh, these online stuff that goes on in the background, a lot of things that goes on behind the scenes uh, that goes unnoticed and goes unthanked. And, um, I think it's very important that we thank the people who put time and put effort into to getting us this contest and getting us some stock to look at and uh, getting us a contest to compete in. Now with that being said, I'll go ahead and move into to the market bear class. I think when you turn on the class, there's two higher quality bears in three and four that should catch your eye and sort up and two lower quality bears and two and one to sort down. Uh, the red-headed bear, I think you have to appreciate, he's a big boned bear who's cracked open in his chest floor. He's bold out the back side of his shoulder, works plenty of shape and dimension on his top, and does this sacrificing no, uh, no soundness. He's plenty flexible and easy on the go. Um, think if you were to change this bear in one aspect, he needs to be maybe a little longer and more extended about his head and neck and tie that higher into the point of his shoulder. And that's definitely where the spot bear has the advantage, or the spotted up bear has the advantage. Um, he he's a lot longer, more elegant about his head and neck, ties it in higher into the point of his shoulder and on the go. You know, he gives you that really cool show bear silhouette. Um, however, coming and going, that's when you maybe have, start to have some problems. He needs to be more cracked open off both ends of his skeleton. He needs to be just a nickel stouter. So we run that top three, four and cut it three in the middle. Uh, it didn't hurt you too hard if you found that four bear up. I think a high quality bear, so he'll go ahead and win the middle pair with a five point cut. Uh, I think you come to two bears that both concern me um, that in terms of their basic build. Of the two, I think two is maybe the better bear. Um, he's got some shape down his top. He's got a good groove going down his top as well. He's got some center body, and um, but a lot past that. You know, he needs, to be open, he needs to be stouter and more opened up on both ends of the skeleton as well. Um, he's one coming and going, tends to get just a nickel narrower constructed. Um, and on top of that, he's awfully restricted off those hind too. 
He doesn't want to flex off those hind two near as easily as the two above him. And I think that consequently makes him want to get up in his top and uh, uh, not as uh, good in the, about his head and neck and shoulder um, maybe as the two above him. Still with that being said, I think he's got just a nickel more bone and he's just maybe just a shade higher quality. Uh, so we'll go ahead and use him up in the bottom pair. I think that one bear, he concerns me the most on a structural aspect. Uh, he's forward in his blade, up in his top and off in his hip. Um, he, uh, sure, he's uh, opened up in the chest floor and wide to the ground, but I think that's maybe because he's outside himself. Um, he kind of wants to get outside of his skeleton. He wants to bow off those ho hind two hawks and really wants to roll off those hind two toes as well, or those outside toes. Um, so with that being said, we go ahead and run the class three, four, two, one, cut it three, five, and two. Thank you. Hi guys, thanks for coming out. The lamb class might have been the most controversial class of the day, one where you could definitely talk your points back in the reasons room. And after talking through as a team, we decided to start the one lamb, one we thought just had put the most good together in terms of having a youthful athletic body composition while still having plenty of shape of pie. He was bold in terms of his rib shape and stayed wide and square throughout his hind saddle. From there down, he's plenty sound and had an adequate amount of bone. Yeah, he kind of wanted to push off his left hawk on the go, but even with that, he wins the class pretty handily. Now from here down is where we had the most challenges. The two lambs, the carcass lamb of the bottom trio, one that definitely has a big frame and will hang with adequate carcass value, but he's also coarse through his shoulder, not very attractive on the profile, and when you study him going away, he's really uncomfortable off his rear two wheels, and we like to give him a shot more power in his lower leg and stifle. Now the blue lamb was probably the most youthful of the class, very trim athletic body type of lamb that I think is adequate in inner leg shape. He might be playing her out of his hip and slightly drops in his press plate. He definitely needs to be deeper in his underline, but I think is the second best profiling of the class, definitely has the look, maybe just not the power. Now the four lane we decided probably had the second most muscle and product in the class. He's level and square out of his hip and hind leg. And on the profile he's complete, balance as well, and you can see how much power he has in his lower leg and stifle. Now where we'd like to change him is we'd like to make him more elevated in his chest floor and have him set down on a bigger foot and bone. Maybe give him a shot more substance in his forearm. But in a market class, product is the ultimate goal. So our priorities are gonna be in muscle, compositional correctness, and you have to have the skeleton wide and sound enough to hold the product. So keeping that in mind, we had the four lamb come second. Now we think the blue lamb is adequate in muscle and power, and he certainly balances better up than the two lamb. So our officials on that are gonna be one, four, three, two, with cuts of five, two, and two. Thanks guys. So today we're gonna talk the Hereford heifers. We liked them two, one, three, four, with cuts of four, two, and three. We felt this class sorted itself into an easy top, more of a challenging middle with an easy bottom. But we still felt like we needed to start the redneck two heifer. She's the one that's most complete in her overall package. She's feminine in her front one third. That's the most laid back out of her blade. She carries herself with the most ease and maternal sweep to her rib, giving her the most maternal center body. And when you read her on the move, she's sound when you get her to the travel allowing her to be the most flexible within her joints and staying comfortable inside her skeleton with an added shot of power through her hip and hind leg that she travels to the ease on. Still, we'd like to make her a bit, we'd like to make her a thick tick stouter over her top and maybe stouter out of her pen set, but we feel like she just still combines the right pieces and good enough to be our class winner. Now moving into a more complex middle pair, we opted to start the one heifer. She's still a functional maternal heifer that's broody in her overall pattern and when you get her on the profile she wedges correctly, she's square out of her pen set and fuller down into the base of her stifle. Still we'd like to acknowledge that she needs to be more extended out of her head and neck and maybe wants to be tucked up into her chest for a bit but we feel like she has the added power and overall maternal make to sort herself into the second hole. Now that's not to say that the, free, that the three female doesn't carry herself with the same qualities. As she's one that we'd have to appreciate, as she's cleaner out of her head and neck, she's smoother out of the point of her shoulder, and she steps down on a bigger bone and stouter out of her lower leg and foot. And when you get her to the travel, she's the one that moves with the most ease and flexibility. But it's on the profile where she lacks the overall center body as the ones before are brought, 
and she's a little short in her terms of her hooks to her hooks and pen set. But to keep it simple, she is the most she is the most similar in the making kind of my top pair. So we'd like to leave her third. Now, like we said, the wide feather heifer is here to go fourth. She's still one that has some qualities that we'd like to appreciate her appreciate about her. She's the most powerful over her top, pushing back into the widest pen set. But she's shallow ribbed, tucked up into her flank, and she likes to narrow up at the base. But most importantly, she wants to get straight out of her blade and tends to want to roach on her spine when on the move. So we'd like her fourth. Again, we like the Hereford heifers, 2, 1, 3, 4, with cuts of 4, 2, and 3. Thank you. Our officials on the breeding gilts are 3, 1, 2, 4, cuts of 2, 3, and 4. We went ahead and started off with the 3 gilt. She's the powerfully made, stout construction gilt who's bold through her center body while still having a maternal sweep to her underline. Now, you'd like to make her a little cleaner and elevated at her front one third to give her a better look on the profile. But as far as that goes, it's really hard to find a lot of holes in this gill. She's just the complete one of the class that we're going to go ahead and start off with. Now, the top pair definitely has some trade-offs. Three gilt is obviously the stouter made gilt who needs to give, be given a little added look on the profile. While one is the feminine fronted option, she just isn't as stout. Because she is. She's feminine fronted and tall shoulders, and she really balances up, balances up nicely on the profile. She becomes problematic coming and going. She needs to be stouter made. She gets pretty frail bone. She likes to bow in on those hind two. And overall, she's just narrow or constructed. So we're going to go ahead and leave her second. Now the two gilt is the broken velvet gilt. She's a really unique breeding piece. She's got a... She's really stout made and powerfully constructed. Big bone and bolt through her center body. She has a lot of cool pieces about her. She just doesn't quite put it together in as nice a package. You'd like to see her cleaner and elevated in her front one third, which, which could come by laying her back in her blade, but that's by, by no means calling her poor structured. You'd also like to see her more maternal in her sweep to her underline. But we're going to go ahead and leave her third because <clears throat> one of the first things you notice when you turn on this class is that poor gilt and you run her to the bottom. She has the least amount of body capacity. She's really shallow caged and higher and drier through her center body. But a real issue that we have with her is her structure. And, and reasons yesterday we found her the majority of the kids came in and called her the good structured gilt and that's just simply not the case and if it is you really need to go back and reevaluate her because she's extremely poor structured she's straight in her shoulder and doesn't hinge right out of her hip causes her to roach in her top line when sent into motion and just doesn't stride out like the other two other three pigs above her that compared with her lack of body capacity makes her a real easy fourth hi my name's riley and i'll be critiquing the market goat class as a committee we saw this as a two-pair class in a top pair, we found two weathers that are stouter and more product oriented. They're rounder in their rib shape and offer more shape and dimension down their top line. Out of the shorter bladed, better necked weathers, we opted to run four first. Four's rounder in the backside of his blade, more expressive in his lower leg, and offers more power from behind. Sure, number one may be a nickel more pulled apart in his chest floor, but he doesn't come out of the backside of his blade with as much power, and when he turns and goes away from you, gets, is shallow twisted and closes up at the surface. So we decided to run them four over one. In a bottom pair of lighter muscled horned goats, we thought these two were narrower constructed, flatter in their rib shape, and don't offer the stoutness our top pair do. Now, when you talk these two comparatively, the two horned weather is, has less problems to fix. He's wider and pulled apart in his chest floor and carries square to the surface. He offers more product in his hind saddle and leg. This leaves the three doe last. She closes up at the ground, doesn't offer the pounds of product from behind, and is the worst off of her hind too. So again, we ran this class four, one, two, three, with cuts of three, five, and three. We decided to run the market steers three, four, two, one, with cuts of two, four, and five. When you first turn the class, you should find two lighter muscled problematic steers to sort their way to the bottom, and two heavier muscled, more youthful appearing steers to sort their way up. And we find the more moderate frame steer that's er, to win. He's more opened up in the base of his skeleton. He's laid back in his shoulder, square topped. And when you get behind him, he's square to his pin set and true to the ground. And when he's set in motion, he's the most or he's the most comfortable on both ends of the skeleton. Now, not taking anything away from the long-sided steer, he's uh, deep-bodied and stout-made, 
However, when he gets set in motion, he gets up in his spine and rounds out in his hip. So we decide to run it three, four in our top pair with a cut of two. If you find that stout made steer uh, to win, we don't ding you too hard. However, if you cross the middle, it gets a little harsher if you find those two ladder steers. Uh, we find the, the black baldy. He gives offers a deep bodied look from the side. He's square over his top. Uh, but when you get behind him, he's the narrowest tracking. And when you get er, set in motion, he walks like a supermodel on a runway. Now we see that he has enough body and rib to go above the hound gutted steer here. He's one that is, has some shape over his top. He's square out to his hip. However, he does too shallow bodied and tight gutted. And, and when set in motion, is the most restricted on both ends of his skeleton. So we decide to run it 2-1 uh, in our top bottom pair with a cut of 5.